in certain instances that I just mentioned, including racism, sexism, and discrimination, I think we have to take a stand. Donald Trump, you have no idea what your words mean. You have no idea. You have no idea what your words mean. And I can't pretend and sort of try and cover this fairly and mm. put it in the, the veil of objectivity. This is wrong. Those comments ref reflect a view increasingly held in the media these days. Indeed, one liberal commentator recently described the Clinton-Trump race as between an apple, that being Clinton, and rancid meat. Another described the race as between the most qualified candidate ever, again Clinton, and an orangutan with a bad haircut. Such commentators are infuriated by equal treatment of the two candidates by the media, calling it, quote, false equivalence. Fox News media analyst and host of Media Buzz, Howard Kurtz, joins me now. Howard, what in the hell is going on with the, with the media these days on this subject? Well, I'm not in favor of false equivalence. If Donald Trump makes twice as many disputed or controversial comments as Hillary Clinton, we shouldn't pretend otherwise. But a lot of people in the media, Brit, are using, especially on the left, are using this false equivalence banner to say that we need to kick the stuffing out of Donald Trump because we in the press have a patriotic duty to expose him. Exhibit A, Nick Kristof, prize-winning liberal columnist for the New York Times, writing as a journalistic malpractice to quote each side and leave it to readers to draw their own conclusions. Even if one side seems to fabricate facts or make ludicrous comments, we owe it to readers to signal when we're writing about a crackpot. So if you view Trump as a crackpot, then you have to be much rougher on him. Well, you know, but what about the, the idea that that we as reporters covering a campaign are not supposed to cover it, the candidate or the candidates based on our own personal view of that candidate. I mean, you have your views and I have mine about both candidates. But as we cover the race, it, I was always taught that what you're supposed to do is be neutral. Now, people accuse us of being slanted one way or the other, but this seems to me that there's, that there's an argument going on here in favor of being slanted. Well, I want to make a distinction between uh, commentators on the right, who also don't like Trump, as yes. well as the left, who are entitled to their opinions. A lot of people we call reporters, they also kind of double as pundits these days. The lines have been blurred. But for all of that, you see this in people who are the editors of websites, who are uh, daily beat reporters and what they say on Twitter. There is a, uh, a snarkiness and a revulsion at what Donald, some what Donald Trump says and does. I am not opposed to aggressive reporting when he uh, when he takes back the birther conspiracy that there should be tough reporting when he's got problems with the trump foundation there should be tough reporting but there's a difference between that and the kind of the tone that is creeping into many of these news stories seems increasingly by any measure to be anti-trump and this of course carries over and we've talked about this before but this carries over into into the argument that's going on now about the proper role of debate moderators who traditionally, when you think of you know Jim Lehrer and all the debates he did, Bob Schieffer, I was involved in one back in 1988 before a lot of people were born, <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't even that I wasn't that that young then, Howard. But <laughs> but the idea was that you were basically up there to try to throw uh, challenging questions to each candidate and let each other respond to, to their answers. And now we now we, now we're sort of hearing that well. You really can't do that because, you know, you've got to intervene in case a candidate says something that you think is false and, and correct the record. Now, our colleague Candy Crowley over at, over at CNN tried that with Mitt Romney and I think uh, came to grief over it uh, four years ago. But what about that? Well, the reason that Matt Lauer took so much heat from his colleagues in the press was because of the feeling that he and wasn't, that wasn't even a debate. That yeah, was. and well, he was the only interviewer that he wasn't tough enough on Trump. Donald Trump made this argument to me last week. Oh, all the moderators are going to be unfair because they're going to fear Lauer-like criticism from their from their uh, their buddies in the media. But the thing is, Britt, that uh, unlike in a Sunday morning interview, when it is the job of the interviewer to follow up, to call out, yeah, because there's no other, nobody out there to do the right. answering. In a uh, general election debate where the two candidates are supposed to go at each other, you don't want to be, as a moderator, um, debating the candidate yourself. And a lot of this is driven by the, uh, the media assumption, Trump's going to get up there and lie, Hillary may shade the truth, but Trump's really the liar here, and the moderators have to step out of their role and to, and to expose him. Well, it, that's not the job of the moderator, and it's not the job of journalists to expose a candidate. We should be aggressive toward both sides. Uh, a lot of people in our business, and I've never seen this before in a campaign, now feel like it's okay, it's even our duty to tilt one way in this campaign. Boy. Wow, what a difference. Howard, thank you. Good to see you.